Hey neighbor, welcome back to Evolution 101 with me, Professor John. The British rock band Bring Me the Horizon have experimented with just about everything under the sun, going from deathcore to metalcore to pop rock electronic until boom, here we are with their heavy as hell first installment in the post-human series, Survival Horror. Almo dropped in early 2019, and I couldn't quite wrap my heart around every track, but I seriously admired the ambition it took to just confidently defy genre expectations and put something like that out. I skipped out on most of the experimental compilation record they put out last Christmas, it just it didn't seem like it was really my thing, but then they caught my attention again, not only with Ludens, but also Parasite Eve to a degree, with Ludens originally being for the Death Stranding video game soundtrack. Bring Me the Horizon quickly found themselves working on new material to avoid going insane during the COVID-19 lockdown, and announced a series of four EPs set to fall under the name of Post Human. I kind of kept my expectations tethered and low-key since so many bands say that they're going to do something and say they're going to do these ambitious projects and then years of silence go by, but Bring Me have already delivered and survival horror, it's knocking at your door. From the moment this album starts, buckle the fuck up, buddy, otherwise you're getting tossed out of a speeding car face first to the asphalt. You're probably still gonna catch a sucker punch no matter what, but to anyone that ever doubted their heaviness or their ability to make heavy music with intense screams from Ollie Sykes in their current era, it's best to sit the fuck down and allow them to sew your mouth shut. Where to even begin? There's so much to talk about, it's like a whirlwind in my head. They've got video game composer Mick Gordon co-producing a few songs alongside the boys, justifiable anger fueling every single song, tons of pace changes hitting every mood, from the There Is A hell ask Dear Diary, to One By One feeling like a slamming hook out of That's The Spirit, and then something totally new like the ballad with Amy Lee of Evanescence that finishes the EP like an unnerving quiet knife to the chest. Survival Horror owns its name in every way you could imagine. There's references to the Resident Evil series stacked up, which I fucking love, Resi 4 is my favorite game of all time after all, and they just spray a flamethrower on the chaos and the world around us. They make it feel like you're in a horror game, literally fighting for your life, only to realize that this pandemic, climate change, crumbling leadership, and the toll it all takes on us mentally isn't a game, it's our virtual reality nightmare come to life. Imagine this EP is a gun loaded with nine bullets. They're firing at a target and you watch from a safe distance, expecting at least a few to miss the mark, but instead, they're all dead on bullseyes. I couldn't believe what I was hearing the first time through. It's genuinely that incredibly unnerving good. It's the exact catharsis we needed to channel this unparalleled anger that none of us have really known what to do with. Politics might feel like the bulk of what's picked up on and discussed when you hear people talking about post-human survival horror, but there's a lot more to it than just the war of the worlds. The war rages on internally too, and we feel the heat of hatred flowing out of Ollie as he blows it out of the water with descriptive writing, rage-induced screams, and some gutturals that'll make you headbang so hard you'll think you're back in the early 2010s. I've always viewed Sympaternal as the ultimate display of what Bring Me the Horizon can deliver as a band, but god dang, this one is changing the conversation. I think it's right up there alongside it at the very least. Absolutely venomous guitar licks, explosive refreshing breakdowns, manic screams, beautiful cleans, beastly drumming and Linkin Park influence production and programming? Throw up the white flag, surrender, they've got you cornered in every conceivable way known to fan. I mean, I mean, man, man, known to man. <laughs> Dear Diary launches the album like a swift throat slit, with the blood spilling out representing the various Resident Evil metaphors I picked up on right away that allude to the T-Virus, something that was clearly meant to represent our current reality that might not be a zombie apocalypse, but it sure as hell has some parallels worth exploring. I want a head count on how many minds this one will blow within the first 30 seconds. Dear Diary is a lot to handle, but it's the band firing on all cylinders with pulsating waves of violent vocals, rampaging guitars, that leave a body count in their wake, and an all-out assault on this unknown force or else virus as the narrator is forced to confront the changes in his own self. When I did a track review for Parasite Eve, I didn't feel as enthusiastic about it as I do now, but thank fuck it grew on me even more in the context of the full EP. 
For a small project like this, I didn't even necessarily expect them to have a connected theme or feeling, but they made it happen. Transitory elements launch in and out of songs alarmingly well, you'll get stoked all over again when a crushing riff or a giant synth tsunami just buries you under the sand. The only thing catchier than coronavirus this year is teardrops. The WHO might seriously have to slap a warning on this one because guys, there are bangers, yeah duh, but then there's bangers with a million flashing arrows pointed right at the runway telling you it's okay to take off to heaven. Or hell, depending on how you view the subject matter. Everything about this song screen screams yes from the top of a mountain. Huge Lincoln Park energy carries this monster right down to the way it was produced and the electronic glitches that sound so sick alongside the burning guitars. That influence does make sense as keyboardist Jordan Fish recently noted how important hybrid theory still is to the band, and quite a few songs on here have traces of LP's legendary new metal sound. Bring Me picked a pretty wide range of collabs, but they all sound killer, starting with Youngblood on Obey. I don't blame you if you were holding your breath leading up to that single's premiere, but I let out a giant sigh of relief after my first listen. This is a new metal rager that fucking bangs, dude! How did they make it all fit together so well? If you somehow didn't notice the Linkin Park worship already, the next song is literally called Itch for the Cure, which I shouldn't have to explain, you get it. Other bands should probably be taking notes from Bring Me Anyways, but maybe make a little specific notation about Itch, because this is how you build suspense properly with an interlude. Atmosphere that feels tangible is hard to pull off, but they flesh this out to perfection, dropping the beat around the 40 second mark with this 2000s as hell sounding instrumental as they tease the next song, Kingslayer. Consistently wowing the audience with thrilling instrumentals is one of this album's best qualities. It's just ridiculous when they'll bake up these piping hot electronics or maybe break out a metallic riff that sends a shiver down your spine, and one song that captures all of that madness at once is Kingslayer. All I can say is bow down, let it happen, it's baby metal sue metal up against a brutal s A brutal Ollie Sykes who gives a flooring full throttle performance. I can't give him enough kudos for this EP. He sounds like eight different versions and eras of himself, but all of them are pure flames. One by One features underground punk duo Nova Twins on one of the album's catchiest tracks that'll definitely take you back to the vibe of That's the Spirit. Ollie kills this chorus. There's just a massive bounce to the whole thing, and I love how both him and the featured guest have so much chemistry vocally, especially once we get to those back and forth screams on the bridge. Even a year later, Luden stands tall and fits in better than I could have even hoped for on the survival horror track list. Mick Gordon assisting with production certainly brought a new perspective to this anti-authoritarian ringleader, so in case you've been missing out, the tension is worth waiting for, since all of this ends in one massive showdown that absolutely feels like a video game IRL. Go bold or go home must have been the band's motto, because they somehow took a slow, brooding song filled with harsh relationship allegories that actually appear to be about a planet, not a lover, and tacked it on successfully as the vivid swan song to a perfect 9 for 9 outing. Amy Lee's voice comes through sounding as haunting as it ever did, taking the reins to start this lengthily titled song, One Day the Only Butterflies Left Will Be In Your Chest As You March Towards Your Death. That's a lot to take in, both in terms of title and song, but I hope you let yourself experience this cold call to arms as it's meant to be heard, right down to that chilling piano note that seals the fate of the entire album. Will you remember this lesson? No matter how Bring Me the Horizon evolves past this point, you have to circle back and remember that this bitter, angry, heavy perfection is always something they've got in their back pocket waiting to come out and play. Each song here feels like it can stand on its own or with the whole pack, but they're all chasing after the same endgame. They couldn't have picked a better time to release post-human survival horror. My jaw was still somewhere on the floor of my living room dating back to my first listen. And if you consider yourself a fan of the band and can't find at least a healthy dose of material you love, you're lying. The first in their series of EPs gets a perfect score, 5 out of 5. Moments like this remind me of what I love doing the most, gushing about music I 110% love and want you to hear too. Thank you for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, then please like this video, share it out with a friend, maybe subscribe if you haven't done that already, and watch another one of my Bring Me videos right over here. Tap this for another recent rock review. All of my socials and more info about the album are in the description, and I'll see you soon for more on ARTV.